Case 3 is the pedunculated mass arising on the upper back of a 15-year-old male. At first glance, I see that this lesion has an exophytic, almost dumbbell-like growth pattern. It is well circumscribed and unencapsulated, and extends into the mid-dermis. There is a large vessel in the deeper dermis, which I could presume is associated with the lesion. The tumor itself appears to contain numerous blood-filled spaces of varying sizes. These may be blood vessels or pseudocysts. Moving to medium power, I can confirm that these are indeed blood vessels. We have larger ones in the center of the lesion, and around them are numerous capillaries. Some are small, while others are larger and more dilated. Lastly, at high power, I see that the stroma is variably hyalinized with scattered chronic inflammatory cells. Lining the capillaries are a single layer of endothelial cells. These are largely flat with small dark nuclei and minimal cytoplasm. If I scanned around enough, I could probably find some that are a little larger and protrude a bit into the vascular lumen, but I wouldn't see any atypical cytologic features. This is an example of a lobular capillary hemangioma a benign vascular lesion that most commonly arises in the head and neck, including mucosal sites. A minority of cases are associated with trauma or pregnancy. These lesions usually do not spontaneously regress, except in some pregnancy-associated cases, which resolve following delivery. Sometimes these are called pyogenic granulomas, which I'm not a fan of because it is neither of those things. In contrast, lobular capillary hemangioma is a perfect name. It's comprised of capillaries, arranged in lobules, around large feeder vessels, and it's benign. Other histologic features to look for include exophytic or pedunculated growth, with an epidermal collarette. This is the narrowing of the epidermis around the lesion you see here, like a collar around the neck of the tumor. Due to its growth pattern, the overlying epidermis is often eroded or ulcerated. In young children, one lesion that may enter the differential is infantile hemangioma. If these become irritated and inflamed, they can look very similar to lobular capillary hemangioma. In such a case, immunohistochemistry for GLUT1 can help. The endothelial cells of infantile hemangioma are GLUT1 positive, which is not seen in the endothelial cells of lobular capillary hemangioma. One pitfall to be aware of is that red blood cells are also positive for GLUT1, so it is important to take a closer look to confirm that the staining you see is actually in the endothelial cells and not in red blood cells stuck to the vessel wall. And that's all I have for now. Please like and subscribe, and for even more educational pathology content, you can follow me on social media, as well as check out my Mega Index, which has links to all my posts and videos. Thanks for watching!